being a second class citizen probably isn't that bad, right? It's one of the top two classes. It's like first runner up. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm looking for the silver lining on these SCOTUS stories. That's the best I could come up with because yet again, the Supreme Court ended up its term by taking a bunch of basic rights away from minorities and handing a bunch of bonus rights to Christians. The descent into theocracy has, if anything, accelerated, and there is no sign that it's slowing down. And look, we're, we're going to talk a lot about the specifics later. We'll get into the most egregious cases and the headlines, and American Atheist Litigation Counsel Jeff Blackwell is going to be here later to dig into the details. But I kind of want to start things off with the 30,000-foot view here because there's this one single thread that runs through all these atrocious pro-Christian decisions dating back really to the very beginning of the Roberts Court. And it's this idea that sincerely held beliefs should have some legal standing, regardless of their accuracy. But, and, and here's the bit that gives away the game, only if they're religious. Sometimes the court just elevates sincerely held beliefs to the same place as facts, right? Like in the Hobby Lobby decision, when they decided that a sincerely held belief that a form of contraception causes abortion was just as good as a fact, even though it was provably untrue. Didn't matter. They sincerely believed it. But sometimes it goes even further than that, right? Sometimes sincerely held religious beliefs are elevated beyond facts to a height that's apparently unachievable by mere secular beliefs. There is no amount of secular bigotry, for example, that excuses a person for public accommodation laws. But why is that? Why am I incapable of the same sincerity of belief as my religious counterpart? Like, let's look specifically at the Groff v. DeJoy case. So this is a case that we've talked a bunch about on the show already, right? Uh, it's where a Christian douchebag got hired by the post office, refused to work Sundays because of his religion. Post office bends over backwards to accommodate him, but eventually somebody gets hurt and somebody's out of town and they're like, dude, we need you to cover on Sunday. He no-shows, he gets disciplined, he quits, he sues. And the Supreme Court discards the fucking duh ruling in favor of the post office from the lower court, overturns a half century of precedent, and decides in favor of Christianity. But what if I had an equal non-religious conviction along the same lines? Now, this is not a hard hypothetical to imagine. Keep in mind that most post offices used to just not open at all on Sundays. Right. But then they entered into contracts with Amazon where some post offices do deliver some stuff on Sunday. So what, what if a mail carrier is just really viscerally, sincerely opposed to Amazon? And what if she could prove it to the court? Right. What if she could go in there and say, look, here's here's the documentation. Here's where I, I, I never use Amazon affiliated stuff. Here's evidence of me paying more for delivery so I don't have to go through Amazon. Here's where I quit using Audible when Amazon bought them out. Here's this long list of social media posts where I call out the inhumanity of Amazon's work practices. And I don't want to work on Sundays because I don't want to contribute to Jeff Bezos's fortune. What then? I mean, the, the real answer, of course, is she can go fuck herself because her employer doesn't give a shit how she feels about Amazon. But how does this court reconcile that outcome? Why are her beliefs less valued than those of a religious person? And keep in mind that the court doesn't require theological justification here or anything. There's no Christian commandment that says thou shalt not make websites for gay people or thou shalt not pay for contraceptive coverage. But the court doesn't draw a distinction between a longstanding tenet of the faith and a sincerely held belief that showed up last Thursday. How the fuck could they? So they're not even saying that a religious belief is superior to a secular one. They're saying that the beliefs of religious people are superior to the beliefs of secular people, regardless of where those beliefs come from. I mean, consider how quick Christians are to cloak their political opinions in religious robes and, and, and how quick the courts are to fucking sanction it. Look at the opposition to vaccine in the wake of the COVID pandemic, right? This became a politically contentious issue on Wednesday and on Thursday, suddenly millions of evangelicals all over the fucking country who never had any objection to vaccine requirements at all had a sincerely held religious belief that happened to line up with the cause du jour in Republican politics. And over and over again, courts gave those expedient epiphanies the same weight as any other sincerely held religious belief. Because according to the Supreme Court, the transient opinions of religious people mean more than the lifelong convictions of atheists. That's not tenable. Our convictions are not secondary. They are not lesser. But if we want society to accept that, apparently we're going to need to prove it again by setting those convictions firmly against the people and the laws and the institutions that devalued them in the first place. <sighs> 